Fearless Month. Res residents can visit him during his office hours at West Brookfield Senior Center from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Monday, August 2014th. And do we have anybody here for public access this evening? Yeah, I think so, a couple words. <clears throat> Your last uh, selectman's meeting, what, what's the outcome on the track? Did you guys go into court or not? You said you were going to court. On the what? The race track. You said you were going to go to court again. Oh, it has been, um, we're not going. We were, we were supposed to go in September, and we're not going now because the judge in the case has uh, retired. But we are going to be taking some other action on that. Okay, so basically the whole thing was dismissed and the judgment has been ruled against the town? It's not as though a judgment is ruled. They were ruled that they could do practice sessions, but we were supposed to be going back to court to find out just what the hours and the regulations <laughs> were on that. And we haven't, but we met with the town council last week in the executive board session, and we are going to be moving forward some, with some other steps. Some other steps, but what I was said, what I said two weeks ago, if you remember, what I said was it was a done deal. It was court was over. So that's pretty much what you're saying right now. It's court's over. Am I right or wrong? You are right. Okay, well, we'll just come out and say how that. Did, how did you seem to know before we did? I don't we know. we I, didn't find out it. till a Friday about it, and you knew about it on a Tuesday. No, I know what's going on. I guess I'm not for the racetrack, and I'm not against the racetrack. But what I am against is is no integrity in our town. Very little integrity, I should I we correct do. myself. A little integrity, Linda. From this board. I don't think the conversation is over. Yeah. So it's over. Yeah, okay. We I'll go along with that too. <clears throat> the the truth the truth is, is a tough thing in our town and that's something we have to we have to get a handle on the truth and we have to stick to the truth, Linda. We can't keep Well I've always been a very truthful person. As far as I'm so, concerned. So just for the camera, for yep. the facts, yeah. the, 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 uh, the uh, racetrack is yep. able to run as, as a practice racetrack. Okay. There, there is a question of hours of operation okay. uh, that he has stated a certain hour, several hours of operation. The neighbors are complaining about those hours of operation. So I think it'll be important that he look to what he's posting as far as hours of operation and that he truly does that racing at six o'clock or seven o'clock on a Sunday night is probably hard on the neighbors. Okay. The, the, the next piece, and we'll talk about it separately in the yeah. agenda, yeah, is that. some education on noise because there was some question by an individual about noise and, and questioning my integrity, so I'll provide some information. Okay, so, so that's a good, good point you just made. We should work with the owner of the track I have to work with the neighbors, and, and you should be able to work with him as uh, you three should be able to work with him. When a business comes in town, you work with them. You don't attack them and bring them into court and say different things, because the town always well, loses. Uh, David, excuse me, we didn't bring him into court. He brought the Zoning Board of Appeals to court. Right, and that's, that's where not, there's a lot of problems in this town. But it wasn't right. the town bringing him to court. I know. It's the same thing we brought White's Landing to court, too, and we, we lost there, too, because of what we did to that man down there. That was wrong, too. And we lost. And this town is spending a lot of money with our town council, foolishly, including with me with my, and my different things going on here, through Clarence. And the people, it's costing this town a boatload of money. Instead of working with people and talking to people. So, that's just a point of interest. And the townspeople know how much, and our, and our taxes aren't going to go down if we continue acting like this. We need businesses in town. We also need people to pay their bills back to the town yeah. when they have bills to the town. And what goes mm -hmm. those? Beth, who are you referring to? We have asked each of the department heads to provide a list of those folks that are in arrears to the town. We also need to, we also need to get someone in our working for us who knows how to do tax titles so we can get all these dead properties back in the books. So, because we're all paying for these properties. And time and time again, we're working on it. We're working on it. And nothing's getting done. We're not in the real estate business. We had someone that was working on tax titles. 
and they're she no passed, longer with us. She and she passed away. And she passed I, I, away, I, I, and I, she I, brought I, she brought in a lot of money, and she set up a lot of payment programs with people. But we're still stuck with all those properties. Still, nothing's moved. That's we're my gonna, point. We're well, going to tear down three buildings. Yeah, yeah. You're going to tear down three buildings. Yep. Okay, that's nice. But we're not going to. Once that happens, then we're going to get a less of a tax base because. Well, what what there. happens though, David, on them is a, a lien is put on those properties. So if anybody wants to buy those properties, or if the owners want to do anything, they have to, yeah, the lien is on, and it goes, I forgot, what, isn't a per diem how much? Yeah. Similar to what interest. the interest in on your taxes. Right, but yeah. that's three houses, but I mean, we can't just tear houses down. We need we need to get these other properties. And we secured a grant for 363000 which includes monies to get a property off Brownfield. That yeah. we've, this mm -hmm. town has waited for how many years? We're not, yeah, we're not talking about Finney's. We're talk, I'm just talking about in general, well, all the stuff you're sitting on. one of the most yeah. valuable yeah. properties yeah. in tax mm -hmm. title, so let's not dismiss Oh, so we're going to spend a boatload, we're going to spend hundreds of thousands and we're going to get back 50,000. Math's not there. So what we get back is, is to have a property in the center of town that's no longer uh, an a active brownfield and a blighted property. Field, yeah. blighted property. Yeah. So yes, that is actually if a we, Yeah, yet. we do not own that property yet. So, so we own the property, then we can do something. Well, Until then, we shouldn't be spending money on it. All right. All right that's Again, I want to okay. thank you for listening to me. Okay. Have a great evening. Um, I will. It's very nice outside. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we'll move on. It's, uh, we're going to move on to the Chapter 90 request yep. that was put in by the Highway Department. Yep. And uh, so I would like to entertain a motion to approve Chapter 90 request for a three-year lease to purchase a 2017 John D. Aloda. And the annual amount would be $61,316 a year. And the estimated cost for for the purchase or the uh, lease of it is uh, $183,948. And I would ask uh, if the chair, well, I could have a motion for the chair to sign this. You have that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, uh, just for uh, two seconds. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that the public understand that a meeting did uh, or was held between the capital improvement folks oh. and the highway department. And that not only was this reviewed, but all other capital projects yes. that were uh, Chapter 90, Nine money. where Chapter 90 money is being planned to be expended, uh, they are in, in agreement as to the strategy. Yes. Yep. They approved of all the spending that he's doing with Chapter 90. And, and I people, appreciate the yeah. highway superintendent's patience yeah. to, to work through with that new committee. And what a lot of people don't realize is that Chapter 90 money comes from the gas tax. That's where the Chapter 90 money comes from. And it's not money that is, a lot of people think it's money that's appropriated by the town, but it's not. That's where it comes from. Those in favor? Aye. 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 is an update on the um, Town Hall Improvement Committee. And that's for Mr. Simpson, if you'd like to come up and take a seat. Hello. Hello. So, an update on the Town Hall Improvement Committee. We, um, the committee's been established. We've had two meetings so far. Um, it's myself, Mary Lou Knight, Al Jones, um, and Don Taft and Carol Plum on the committee. And um, we elected officers, I'll be the chair. Um, Mary Lou's gonna be the clerk. Um, Al Jones is gonna be the CIPC liaison because he's also on that committee. And um, since um, Mary Lou and I are both on the CDBG grant committee, we're gonna act as liaisons for that because there's some related items on that. Um, and you'll see our minutes when they come through. But um, what we're looking for from the select board is our chart, at least the draft chart that we were given was said that we were to manage projects related to the town hall that we would define with the selectmen. The selectmen would define for us to specifically, specific tasks to 
go after and I'd like to hopefully tonight just discuss what those what we have in mind and get your agreement that those are the places we want to move forward and um, and then we can talk about sort of means and methods after that um, but the first thing is the furnace the broken down furnace needs to be replaced so that's item one mm -hmm. um, the second is the bathroom and ADA accessibility monies that we allocated <coughs> two years ago we'd like to pursue the completion of that project. Um, the board, uh, we, we think it would make, be appropriate for the Town Hall Improvement Committee to make a recommendation regarding the stair lift so that we have a recommendation from our board in time for the, the special town meeting. Um, one thing that uh, came up in committee was um, just sort of an idea that Don Taft had floated a couple years ago because we've had issues with ice flow coming off the roof is the potential for getting real snow cleats up there instead of what I believe up there is kind of just the, the little wire things, um, if even that. Um, and they haven't been very effective at splitting up the snow. I mean, no matter what, we're going to have snow coming off. But, right. but snow's um, come off the year. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But, but we don't have any sort of ice break or snow guard system up there. You can also at least make sure it's coming off directly in areas away from pedestrian traffic or away from the bulk of pedestrian Exactly. So, um, so we're willing to look into that, and just gather information and quotes, and we will provide them to the select board. Um, the two other items that we had as things to consider, um, there was some talk about bringing the uh, the honor roll is upstairs right now, and no one gets to see it. So we were discussing, well, do we want to bring it down here where we, people can see it? But then, depending if the stair lift goes in, there's no need to yeah. even consider that. But we we sort of batted that idea around. We don't plan on doing anything with that at this time. Well, I, but at the time, though, if we don't get the chair lift, I think it would be nice to have it come down here. Exactly. It's such a nice piece so people can see it. And it needs a lot of update on to it, too. Yeah, and we'd be glad to yeah. facilitate and manage that process. But right now, that's on hold. If the stair lift goes and we're, we're accessing the upstairs, then we've got a whole bunch of other projects to t tackle to get the upstairs going. Okay. Um, and the other thing we're talking about is the um, counter right there. Um, just wondering what to do with it, and we had some discussion with you and a couple other folks, and uh, the consensus was that it's historical, and I think yeah, generally people want to stay here. It's been here since 1904. And exactly. We've lost, and like we said, we've lost enough history in the town. Yeah. This so, should be here. So one thing that we were contemplating just to sort of clear up the space of the counter is to bring it upstairs yeah. in the Great Hall, make it sort of a counter to one side or the other, sort yeah. of an entrance counter space, because it yeah. would be more fitting for that room, and it would open yeah. up some space in here. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, we look into just getting some sort of shroud to cover up the tables as well. So those are the projects we're interested in pursuing with your blessing. And I think that's what I'm here for tonight, first of all, to see if those are the things or if there's other items that you want us to look into. There's one small item I would like you to look into. Yeah. Um, is lighting in that front hallway. Okay. Um, from the standpoint of it's, it's like a cave when you first walk in. And it might be something that can get incorporated in when we're in the bathroom with the ADA, mm -hmm. um, or if it needs to be, you know, separately <coughs> funded, it's, it, it wouldn't be a huge amount of money probably no. to bring in. Well, some and stuff. we are going to need an electrician um, for the wiring and the furnace. Right. So, it so could that be might a, be an opportunity to kind of, you know, consolidate the two, mm -hmm. um, in essence. Do you want to talk to Scott Mansfield about coming in and doing that? Like, because they have been helping us with that. Yeah, that, that, that would probably be perfect. Because we haven't gotten to the point of figuring out what the scope is for the electrical work for the furnace yet. But um, but that would be. Uh, so we should probably would, get in touch with him then ahead of time. I, I can do that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah so you yeah. do that. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, thank you. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Bill, could you discuss smoke alarms in this town hall? Okay. And I think they. No, we don't have any smoke alarms. Could be tied into the fire department. I mean, something. Do we have some yeah. kind of protection here? And yeah, I know. We're talking about it, but no one does anything about it. Yep. Um, <coughs> that's a good idea. Yep. Would the select committee like us to look into that? If, if yes. that's if that's okay. I mean, yeah. it's just some of these to get a full fire alarm system in here might be one thing, but there might be a step we can do before doing the full board and panel that. Yeah. Right. That right. Would, that yeah. Would, yeah. Even if it's not a full board and panel, I mean, if we wound up going with. Carbon monoxide. Yeah, carbon monoxide. Yeah, carbon monoxide. Yeah. It's important. Downstairs. And we, and we could talk to uh, um, talk to Peter right out of the gate and just say, okay, what are the requirements of this building? Make a list and, yeah. and right. at least get it down in the basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and then see the other things. 
back of, back of money that she's thinking <laughs> about well, spending um, back to the plans for downstairs. Yeah. If that would want to be part of that. Yes, that would be part of the, the, because, well, the other, the CDBG component is we are going to be putting together design bid documents for the renovation of downstairs. Right. So we've got the grant money to fund that work, mm -hmm. the design work. Um, and we've also got grant money to put together an ADA transition plan, the formal one, finally, for the whole town. So that's going to be all the t municipal facilities. Um, so, but that's that would be incorporated in the, because to do a full renovation, you got to meet all codes. Exactly. But, um, but we could look into lighting and smoke alarms downstairs at least temporarily because we need something down there, yeah, right. and then and then maybe, yeah. Um, and yeah, because well, we'll be talking to yeah, lots of people. So yeah. it, it may be worth bringing in um, the, the folks from National Grid to do the energy audits. We had that, didn't we? Had it a couple of years ago, but I don't know. I think there's some new funding out there. I heard there's some new funding out there for for replacements. Oh yes. Yeah, oh yeah. And, and uh, well, speaking of that, there's a, there's a star. Um, so the highway department went through their fixtures, yep. and it was like a buck a bulb kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't bring them in here. Okay. So when you're talking to Tentasqua, the it's their energy guy that okay. came over and okay. did the audit. Oh yes. All right. So again, we stopped with the highway department because. We, we made progress, right? Absolutely. But now, but now it's a question of could we make progress here? And I'm looking at these bulbs and well, saying, and that's what I was uh, looking at. Yeah. I, I was sitting there looking yeah. at it, going, you know what? I had I had heard about the buckable program and figured maybe we have an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to do some improvements. And that ties right into the lighting in the front hall too. Well, sure. exactly. Yeah. It's kind of your yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Okay, and, and was that through Scott and Mansfield? Was it through? It was through their energy consultant, so the, so the custodian that runs the buildings over there recommended this guy's name. I've got it somewhere. I think you may have emailed it to me before, but I'll, yeah. I'll find yeah. out. If you is. can't find it, I'll find it. Okay. So it's easy enough that we should cooperate at least using the same consultant. Okay. So, anything else? That we I can't think of anything right now. Honestly, we know that the furnace is probably yeah. going to be top that's, priority, that's but as we're doing some of these other things, if we can work in the small things and the cracks, that would be nice. Exactly. I think one of the next important things is the bathroom and yeah, the absolutely. ADA, because we've been bouncing around with that now for about two or three years, yeah, and I think that should be a big priority. So, on so if, if sure. I could just get you, could you formally say that those are the tasks for us to tackle and then we can talk means and methods for that yeah. work? Yeah. Right. So if you need a motion, do you have I a motion would, that, that have that's a, a priority list? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll second. second I'll second it. Discussion. Um, Bill, before in the board, mm -hmm. um, I talked to the building inspector about that bathroom and he said there's something that you can't do in there. The walls are too thick, so I think you should check with him to make sure that we can renovate that bathroom. Mm -hmm. okay. He was talking about something to do with the thickness of the walls and the doors. Well, so I think you should cook. the existing bathroom. Yeah, yeah, the brick wall would have you'd have to actually cut into the brick to get the door width. Yeah, but he said there's sure. something more to it than that. So just I was just talking about something else, and that came up. And yeah, I will. He's he's on the he's top on the list when it comes to that project. Okay, so. no, just, uh, thank well, you. But when it goes back to that whole whole subject, if we have access to the upstairs, then that says that we need to do more than just what we have. Mm -hmm. So that that would be the excuse to then request a waiver or whatever that document might be to do something larger, based on the last architect's design. Yes. Yes. So yeah, but, but I mean, right now, we're not, none of the stuff that we're proposing here is impacting right. is going to hit any of those pieces. But we are still going to reach out to Mass Historic, and uh, I think I don't know if we'd have to get in touch with the ADA board for the bathroom, but we'll, we'll be, an architect will consult with. Yeah. To determine just if there's anyone else we have to reach out to. So, so the other thing that Bill and I were talking before the meeting, there's a preservation Massachusetts <coughs> uh, conference in September, and it's my plan to attend that for this and other other reasons. And it would also be park money, that, and we'll talk about that okay. a bit. Okay. Yeah, and, and and there is funding to do work with windows and stuff. I know that we talked with Mass Historic about that, yeah. and uh, that. We've got, a, we've got a handful of things to take care of, but that may be something we tackle down the road, too. And especially if we get access to upstairs, because... Then we have to. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's things we have to do, so... 
So all in favor of the priority list that Bill has? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you. So, Thank um, you, Bill. Well, and then the, the next step then is how do we do this? Um, um, initially, our thinking was basically we'll gather proposals, we'll bring them to you, and you sign and approve them, and then we'll manage yeah. the process. Yep. If, That's what you know, we'll do. I don't think we need the intent. Is yeah. that you all do the research, come up with what the project plan is, and, yep. and present the options? Okay. Great. Yeah, that's that's more, yeah. pretty much what we were yeah, thinking as one of them. Cool. Okay, that works for that us. Um, and then, um, what's the other thing? Oh, yes. Um, so, moving on those priorities, um, we've gotten only two quotes for the furnace. We've requested probably five or six people provide quotes. Several people said they would have them on multiple occasions and have not been able yeah. to provide them. But we have a quote from McDonald and a quote from Gervais. Um, effectively replacing the downstairs, the broken furnace, uh, with the capacity to replace that. Um, McDonald was the lower of the two quotes. Both companies are are competent and, 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 comparable. Comparable. Yeah. and comparable. Um So, as a committee, we voted to just contact McDonald and just flush out their quote and get more information from them, ask questions, and see if that makes sense. And then, if that seems to be the way to go, we'll bring that to you for signature. And approval. Um, so we have that proposal and we're hopefully going to be moving forward, but we want to get them in here again and go over the details before we bring it to you. Well, so I think you have to get something done before we went to Well, we need to, we want to get that in another week or two. Yeah. We, we don't want to, <laughs> we don't want to wait any more on that. Um, and regarding the bathroom and ADA accessibility, um, as a committee we decided that the best way that we feel to move forward would be to hire the architect who did the ADA transition the plan for the building to do the next phase. It would be eight to ten thousand. Um, I asked him to give us a formal proposal for that because as he did the work, we can con basically continue his his so work. So you, with you the use that money out of the money that we had appropriated at fifty thousand dollars. Exactly, and the original plan was forty thousand worth for construction and ten thousand worth for contingency and. Oversight and design and architectural and engineering. The money is all there. Well, it's, it was a couple of years ago, so and it's a matter of getting contractors in for the right cost. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm soliciting a formal proposal from him right now. Hopefully, we'll have that next week, and so maybe in a week or two, we'll hopefully have a contract for the furnace and for a design consultant, architect and engineer for the uh, ADA work. So and see us, and we'll see see what they are, and we'll, we'll approve them and sign on the proper document. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just, I just want to give you a heads up. That's, <clears throat> okay. We've already taken those steps, and that's the direction we're moving with those two pieces. Great and um, and the other thing is, uh, we're willing to take uh, maybe work with the highway department and some other folks to. We're gonna have to do some disassembly, but then move that upstairs. It, it comes apart in two pieces. Uh, yeah, I looked at it. There, there are ways. It's gonna, you know, we'll take a little finagling, but we can, we can work it. Yeah. I have some furniture moving type equipment as well, if it's helpful. At least for getting it to the stairs and. There may be. I, I know a guy who moves furniture all the time. I can't show up. All right, no. so we're not gonna. Well, like, and really to lift it. Um, but. Uh, and you should check too. I think there was. Different departments have had things stored under there too. Yeah, there are some cabinets in there. I don't. We're, we're, we looked at it briefly, but we'll. I know there were some storages in there, so you should probably check. Yeah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> with your permission, we'll just start moving on that because there's no real cost associated with it. We'll just take care of it. So, other than that, all yeah, set. All set. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Um, next one on the agenda is the noise, noise decibel clarification and <clears throat> we have we have one here yeah well I, i've got it here from mrs robert oh, oh you have another one <laughs> That's from, she did that oh let me see that and then i have a letter here too if you want me to read too from mrs plum yes do it okay do you want me to read that now i think so Okay, um, this is continuing on with the noise from the racetrack. This came from uh, Carol and Brian Plum, who live at, I think it's 80, 89 Pine Lane. Pine Lane. Uh, she says, for the past decade, the noise from the racetrack has steadily gotten worse. The sound from the noisy machines travel down the river and is quite disturbing, especially on weekends when we wish to be outside. The racing begins around 10 a.m. and goes sometimes until 6 p.m. 
I feel that those of us in paths of the noisemaker should look into having our property values reassessed because the bothersome noise devalues our property. People living in rural areas don't expect to hear traffic sounds nonstop all weekend long. I should also mention that the track is open some weekday afternoons. I would hope that something could be done about the noise. Perhaps sound barriers could be installed as a buffer. We have lived in Brookfield for 44 years. We hope that you will be able to address this problem, which affects many of us. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Carolyn Bryan Plum. And I have, I can say I have walked, it was one time we had uh, a race going on and we walked all the way down to where Carol is because it comes right in the mouth of the rivers down there and you'd think that the race is going on right down there because it carries down. The water that badly. Oh yeah, it, yeah. Well, the, the noise is, noise. It's right there. And I know that um, it also bothers um, Charlie Wilson who lives down there too on Ward Street and it bothers them. It's bothering a lot of people now. It's got, and even someone had talked to me a couple of weeks ago that lives down here on Hayden Avenue. Yep, I've, I've heard the same from oh, folks yeah. on Hayden. It is, they it's, get it it's coming up. It's been doing the same thing for years. It comes, they're, they're getting it up here too. So it's not just, you know, in one center of town. It's affecting, and I'm sure if we ask people over at Nana Tomcor, I'm sure they're hearing it too, because a lot of them are right on the river too. So I'm sure the, the noise is carrying up there also. So what I <coughs> provided in the uh, uh, Selectman's administrative assistant can have copies of this for people that uh, have questions about it, at least in the near term. So the document that I prepared was what are the noise thresholds for different things, just so that people are, understand mm -hmm. what those noise thresholds are. There is Mass General Law, I stated that the last time, and uh, I have provided the references to uh, the Board of Selectmen's administrative assistant so that she can um, give that or pass that on should people ask about mm -hmm. it. But off-road vehicles manufactured after 1998 have a requirement of 98 uh, DBA decibels at 20 inches from the engine. Mm -hmm. Any anything manufactured before that time it was 101 DBA at 20 inches. Now, before I start talking about math and science and whatnot, I hold an engineering degree. Okay. The first third of my uh, GE experience was I was operating power equipment. The middle third of it I was designing it, mm -hmm. and the end of it I was selling it. So I have a little bit of understanding of noise. And in that particular case, what we did is at a fence line, we made sure that we didn't have anything greater than 85 dBA. What that talks about is that's basically an automobile running at 25 feet. Uh, it is not uncommon for a motor, motorcycle or motorbike to be at 88 or 90 dBA, a distance away from the bike, 30 feet mm -hmm. away. So in, in part, noise, come, uh, noise can be attenuated by distance. It can be attenuated by barriers. There can be some very expensive barriers that uh, come to bear. But what we have is uh, a situation where, and I just used the 100 dBA because it's uh, midway between the uh, 1998 standard and the, uh, for the old and new. And at 20 inches, at 100 dBA, if you then just stretch without putting th barriers in the middle, it should be at 400 feet, and that's the distance to the house of the, the, the first house that's located close to the track. Mm -hmm. Uh, it should be 54 dBA. That would suggest that that would be a quiet street. Obviously not. So w what's happening, it's, it's apparent that uh, the, the folks that are bringing their bikes there are taking off their sound attenuation equipment because the bike runs faster. Yep. And yep. that's pretty, pretty easy. So uh, again. They're running it, straight pipe instead of running yeah. They're running no pipe is no what they're pipe. doing. <laughs> My opinion. Yep. So, so anyway. so. It, I, in, in talking to the owner, I, I did explain that he had some responsibility to guide people if he knew that they had, and uh, I, I will continue to guide, I will continue to talk to him, um, but it, it really works out that he has to police and the folks riding need to police so such that they are compliant with Mass General Law. And again, it's the environmental uh, police that have the responsibility for jurisdiction, and again, they've got to work it out. So anyway, I'll provide these documents to the yeah. admin to uh, have available should people ask. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. And, you and then we, I know that we had met last week with um, Attorney Blake from K&P, 
and he was supposed to do like a point list for the Board of Health because we kind of turned it over some of it to them. Yeah, well, he said something. He's a rider, and so he understands, yeah, he understands it all what the noise level should be yeah. at a boundary, and so, so he, he owes us that information. Have, do you know if Mike has heard anything? Last time I heard Mike had not. So maybe you should Jeff send Mike. Jeff a, Jeff an email and well. ask him if he can follow up on what we talked about last Thursday. Okay, so now we'll go on to the campground discussion. Right, so campground, just to update you, uh, we paid phase two uh, of, the, of the programs, $35,000 mm -hmm. grant. We've now gone through phase two. It's something about $2,600 uh, 20, so, yeah, $2, that we paid so far. We have a, a last portion that'll uh, phases three and four that need to be finished by September 15th. Oh. So we're, we're in the short strokes of finishing that work. Um, so with that, what I need tonight is a motion, as we've had the prior two phases, where the uh, Board of Selectmen authorized in, in combination with the uh, Historical Commission to allow me to process the bill uh, based on uh, mass historical approval of the okay. documents. And so I do need that motion tonight. So I'll make that motion that the Board of Selectmen, uh, in cooperation with the Historical Commission, authorize the payment of phase uh, three and four of the campground contract uh, uh, based on mass historical approval of the documents. Okay. I'll make that motion. I'll Thank second you. that. Any, right. you have some more discussion? Yeah, let's just uh, use that for a second, then we can finish up. So with that, what's important is that uh, the 15th or sometime around, we're going to have another public hearing as to what the ideas will be as to going forward. That's going to involve money. and. With that, back to the earlier meeting that I talked about going to, is that there is park money, and we'll talk about open space okay. as well. There's park money that's available, there's preservation money that's available, and what, what I found so far is that nobody's talking about this culture that was around 3,000 years. That there's a lot of talk about the, the contact period and beyond as far as preservation. Mm -hmm. I, I should say, Carol, Carol Plum and I went to a yeah. preservation Worcester meeting a couple of weeks ago and learned at, at that point that, again, nobody's talking about this earlier culture. Mm -hmm. So there may be some opportunity for Brookfield, if you look at it, to consider doing something on a cultural, educational yes. basis and be a center of something. Yes, because so, I think this is the um, oldest one actually around. It is. It is. So, yeah. so uh, east and most point. Although if there's any um, interest in incorporating some of the information from the later periods as well, I know of some but resources that, that might be able to help us um, from a standpoint of developing a full spectrum going all the way back to what we're finding with this site and then bringing oh. it all the way forward to, to could, modern time. It could be used. What we've had is an offer of a lot of the artifacts that were found in the region that there were these, back to Barky Keith and what he yeah, had done, and his, his collection goes to Springfield, and then there's another collection uh, in Springfield. There's a third collection that were, it was a person that was a buddy of, the, a buddy yeah. of theirs, mm -hmm. and his daughter is looking to clear out a garage and would like to have it find a home, and, does, it, it, and she does not, and the father did not want that collection to go to Springfield. Okay. And so there is a collection out there that we need to talk about. Yes. And so there are some things. So again, it, it's time, money, and, and the like, but I think it's worthwhile continuing oh, sure. to pursue. It would be wonderful to have something down in Brookfield here. It would be a teaching center, and it would really put us on it, the map. It may not have, <laughs> and the thing that we've learned with the 15 acres or 16 acres, it may not be there for the simple reason. You can't put anything there. We, no, you can't. We, we found more features that you just can't build on. So you found more. We found more. There's definitely that. So it's, it's not just what Mark and Keith yeah. found. So anyway, so again, good progress, okay. but again, we've got 30 days basically to close okay. down and get the reports that we need so that when we can come back to the townspeople to say, this okay. is what we found, what do you want to do about it? Good. All right. Well, thank you. thank you for all the hard work you're doing. Oh, we're working away at it. So we need that motion. Okay. Um, we all were in approval of this motion. I'll make Aye. a motion to approve it. Uh, well, I think we had the motion, so yeah. it's just a matter of those yeah. in favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're all set where that is. Now you want to move on to your second discussion on it? 
Oh yeah, so so uh, we did. Uh, we were we were helpful to some folks at yeah. Central Mass Regional mm -hmm. Planning. They heard of a uh, an opportunity for us. Um, the Mass Office of Collaboration had an interest to move a project into Central Massachusetts. It was suggested that they talk to us uh, as to what might be a, an appropriate thing that the Office of Collaboration could work on. Um, the open space and recreational plan uh, needs to be updated by next July. What they have proposed, and uh, again, their funding, because it's their resources, to do a sensing of the town as to open space and recreation to see what our interests are, because this document needs to be updated. And uh, we are in the midst of, of the throws, and you may have seen it in your emails, yeah. asking you to uh, fill out a survey. That survey, again, would be collected and, and analyzed by this Office of Collaboration for us. They would then hold uh, sensing sessions based on what's being said. Given that we have progress on those two and that we're actually working towards a, a goal, uh, we then can apply for an $8,000 grant to do this document and do the work that would update this document. And then what that does in July, that puts the town in position a position to be able to go get additional grant monies, which could include park monies, recreation monies. We're having some good um, input from the recreation side, the younger mm -hmm. crowd. Um, so we'll continue to work on, on this. But again, um, I have uh, for Karen, if she'd be, uh, be amenable, I have some copies of the survey, that they, the round one survey mm -hmm. that we'll put in the lobby. Uh, and then we've got an email link for those that want email to be able to have them fill out the survey. But again, it's it's a broad brush of what the interests are, and then given what those interests are, then you then say, okay, what are your real priorities? And then with that, you then develop the document. So we're making some progress. And again, at no cost to the town other than the volunteer hours that are going into this thing to get and the survey around. What I'm pleased about, you just said how the younger people are starting to take an interest in this now, too. Yep. That's yep. good. Yep. This is what I've always wished for, for anything where the town is, that the younger people start taking more of an interest in yep. the community. And this could be the way to improve <laughs> this field. Yeah. And okay. I know just in a, in a uh, somewhat casual conversation, um, okay caught by the rec committee as I was coming around walking a dog. Uh, I know that they're they're hoping that some of this activity might result in us potentially finding um, funding or a siting opportunity for a second soccer field, whether it's in some form of an expansion at Lewis Field or if there was some other location available in town because mm -hmm. their program is growing and they oh, very yeah. much are struggling for, for field yes. space. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's a very difficult situation for them. So this, this may be an opportunity to, to find some solutions that direction. Mm -hmm. So we have a challenge, and I'm to yeah. be really frank about mm -hmm. it because, um, again, back prior to coming to Brookfield, yeah. I lived in Westminster, lived on Route 2, and I saw that town double. Mm -hmm. And what we have now, if you take the back route back to Dunbrook Bridge and why Dunbrook Bridge, <laughs> yeah. if you take that back route to Worcester, yeah. you, you got a ton of houses, oh, sure. all right, being built. That's coming this way, oh, and yes. we've got to we've got to get ahead of it. Yeah. And this is part one of part of it, it for sure. But but we really have to get a hold of it uh, because if we put a ton of kids in a school, we know who, how that works. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't work. So anyway, okay. so we're working on this, and uh, I've got some documents for Karen to, to have around if people want to fill out a survey. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and thank you for all, again for all the hard work that you do. On. We're working at it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now we're going to go on. We'll set some meeting dates. Now the first one is to set through on August 22nd, but we're going to have to cancel that because of the electrical outage, which you'll see when you just get your car spawned. Yeah. But 95, if you could set me for that, because we did set that for the hearing dates, even though you officially haven't set the date yet. 95. I have tentatively September 5th. Five o'clock. Five. The hearing. On, on the 22nd, from five o'clock in the afternoon till one o'clock in the morning. And it's just that it's going to be an outage, and it's just going to affect uh, the town hall. Linda, if you want to look in your correspondence, yeah. or I'm sure you want to wait, she can explain if we have to hold that there. Okay, why well, don't we do that first? Okay, we'll do that first. Okay, let me find it here because I saw it today. Okay, National Grid right here. Okay, National Grid 
is committed to delivering safe and reliable electric rates to our customers. To make improvements to our electrical distribution system, we will be working your neighborhood on Tuesday, August 22nd, beginning at 5 o'clock p.m. until approximately 1 a.m. for our crews to work our equipment safely. It will be necessary to interrupt your electrical service for eight hours. We regret the temporary inconvenience. We are providing you and your neighbors with one week's notice so that you may make any necessary provisions to minimize the discomfort associated with the temporary loss of power. The street affected by this planned outage in Brookfield will include 6th Central Street. Now, Peter did call the electric company mm -hmm. because he was concerned, and they did confirm that it's only this building that will lose the electricity. So I know that sounds odd, but I sick. guess it's some kind of transfer. The thing they're doing only affects this building. That's what Peter told me in an email. I think you got the Excellent. email to that. Yeah. Yeah. OK, that's good. So yeah, so we can just. So. so the the question I had was the uh, hearings on the demolishing. What nine did, five. Nine five nine and five, it, which I was going to ask you to, to it, officially yeah. set a meeting date. Yes, yeah. and then they, they you wanted them to start at like five or something. No, we were no, starting. No, no. Yeah. I believe the first one was seven. seven oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Seven, okay. Yeah. All right. And that, okay. And that's not, it has nothing to do with that. So okay. if we so if we cancel the twenty second, and if we feel that we need to have something beforehand, we could either try to schedule something in, you know, later on in the week. There's nothing on the 22nd anyway, and we're all going to be on vacation, I think, a week or so before, so if anything yeah. comes up, we can always call a meeting. Yeah, we can always call a meeting, or we can even call a meeting sometime even on the week of the 28th if we really need to. Yep. Okay, so we're going to, we have a meeting on? 9-5. Nine 9-5. Five. Nine five. And then did you want to do 9-19? Yep, 9-19. Yep, nine nineteen. Yep. So let me get it from my calendar. Ten three. And yeah, the seventeenth of October. And we're gonna do the thirty first, that's Halloween. Okay. So we wanna put continue on? Uh, we just want to go to October and then we'll. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Keep, keep going. So it's seven, October 17, and then next week's Thanksgiving. So that's not going uh, No, that's the 24th. But. Uh, 31st is um, Halloween. That's what yeah, I just so, said. Yeah, we don't want to do that. No, we don't okay. want to do that. All right. So then we just start with uh, 7 and 21 and. and uh, yeah, probably 7. 7 and 21. Um, yeah. Fun. Well, on 1121, is that the week of Thanksgiving? That is the week of Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, when are we scheduling the fall town oh, meeting? Because yeah. that is that might drive some additional meetings yeah. within that schedule yeah. based on well, the warrant article. Which I know I had talked to the accountant today, and it's still really not quite finished with the audit yet. She has another box of stuff. Another box waiting for them to come picked up. So we should talk to her more so we'll get an idea probably by the next time we meet. And we'll know maybe well, when we can well, schedule it. The next time we meet is 9 5. Oh, we can try to get it in. Karen, maybe you could talk to Carrie about and she can maybe discuss it with the auditors and find out when we can probably I'll try get to get a tentative, yeah, tentative date. When we can do it. Because, well, you know, we still have to have free, care, free cash certified yet. Right. Yep. So why don't we use that 20, it's the week of the 23rd of October is kind of like the target for that. Yeah, that sounds like, right? let's at least target that and then see if you think we're going to be ready for it. You mean to target for a uh, town meeting? The special town. A special. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I don't even know if we... We have, so I'm at, I mean, even... What, what, what the week of the... It would be the 27th, would, would be the Friday night. Friday night. Of, uh, of what month? Of, of October. October. I, I even remember when the Department of Revenue was out here, they said we could even um, do one up in November. Usually oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I was just saying that that would be the earliest. Yeah, that that's you what could they do said, it. yeah, so even so, sometime so, in November. Yeah. Yeah, either that or, or probably the, the week prior, like the uh, uh, whatever the, probably 1118 is, or 1117 is probably the alternate mm. day. Yeah. yeah. So if you can right talk to Carrie and see how things are going and maybe how we can progress and see when we might know when things can yes. be sent in. Okay. I think that'd be a good idea. Good. Do you want to vote on the hmm? Do you want to vote on the 
do you want to officially vote on the selectmen's meetings? Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to, to have all of our meetings that we already scheduled for the month of September and October and into November. Second. Those in oh. favor. You're in favor. I, all in favor? Hi. Hi. Don't mind me. I usually make those I motions. I don't usually do. But you jumped ahead of me. You skip 10:30 when you jump right to 11:07 and 11:21. Is that it? Yeah, we skip the 31st. Okay. But we said because it was no, still said it's two in October. Yeah, right. we still have two in October. Okay. Two, two, two. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll go on here into what do we have here? Correspondence. Correspondence. I think. Is next. Yeah. yeah, right here. That's what it is. All right. Then now this is we have two from um, charter. It says on uh, on or after July 25th, Hillsong Channel in S and D and H D will be added to the standard and select levels of service. And on August 2nd, 2017, F X X will be replaced by W G N America on the Spectrum Stream level of service. It says for a complete lineup, visit Spectrum dot com slash channels channels to view this notice online or visit spectrum dot net programming notices and if we have any questions we can get in touch with uh, Anna Lucy at 774-243-9735 and then this is another one also from her effective on or after September 29th 2017 11 Sports Network, formerly One World Sports, will no longer be available on the Latino View. So that's from Charter. Okay, and then this here is from uh, the Commonwealth of Mass, from the, from the uh, governor and the lieutenant governor. It said the Department of Telecommunications and Cable Department will hold a public hearing pursuant to Mass General Law 166A, Chapter 15, Section 15, and 207, chap, uh, Section 6.03, to investigate the basic service tier programming equipment and ins installation rates for re regulated basic service tier programming equipment and installation rates for the for the rate recalculated municipalities in Massachusetts served by charter communications in response to its filing. The hearing will be held at 10 a.m. on August 24, 2017 at 1000 Washington Street, hearing room 1E Boston, Mass, and is a formal hearing conducted under General Law 30A and the standard adjunctuary rules of practice and procedure at 801 Mass General Law 100 Charter as the cable operator serving a municipality is required to arrange for notice for the hearing, both by newspaper publication and by cable, mats, cable casting. A copy of the hearing notice that was provided to Charter for publication is enclosed for informational purposes. And they notify it. We don't have and they, to Yeah, they notify it. And then we just did the National Grid one, yeah, so that's it. all set. So that's all set here in correspondence. And now under other, let's see, what do we have? Oh, we don't have anything under other either. Do you have anything else that you'd like to bring the up? The only other thing I would do is a motion to adjourn. Okay. All, right. <laughs> all in favor? All right. Thank you.